Everywhere Daisy went, she was interviewed by reporters and in demand as a public speaker. In a brilliant move, she asked Mrs. Woodrow Wilson, wife of the president, to serve as honorary president of Girl Scouting. And every first lady since Mrs. Wilson has served in that capacity. She later coerced Mrs. Wilson, Mrs. Coolidge, and Mrs. Hoover into wearing the official Girl Scout uniform as support for the movement. According to Josephine Dascom Bacon, it was Daisy's effervescent spirit that attracted girls to Juliet Lowe and the Girl Scout movement. She brought to it the gaiety, the thrill, the adventurous spirit of a 12-year-old. Josephine Bacon continues, We were soon growing by leaps and bounds, and as we grew, our organization grew more and more complex. Committees doubled and trebled, and decisions grew more technical and important. This great child of hers was outgrowing its clothes and growing into a vast international movement. In 1920, Daisy resigned as president, taking the title of founder, and she turned all her attention to the worldwide organization. She believed that Girl Scouting could foster world peace and understanding. As she put it, Girl Scouting and Girl Guiding can be the magic thread which links the youth of the world together. Daisy invited the World Association to hold the World Camp in the United States in May 1926. 456 people from 30 countries attended the meeting at Camp Edith Macy. Girl Guides and Girl Scouts shared ideas and hopes. As the second director, Jane Dieter Rippen wrote, Her desire was our desire. The hope that this world camp held in our country would mean one more real step for the goal that was and is in our hearts, world peace. For Juliet Lowe, there was an even deeper meaning to the world camp as she was secretly battling breast cancer. Needing to travel to England to settle her affairs, Juliet Lowe made her last transatlantic voyage. It was during this trip that she performed one of her final Daisy stunts. There was to be a shipboard masquerade party. Daisy decided to attend in order to cheer up her traveling companions, and she enlisted the help of the ship's purser with putting together her costume. Daisy covered herself with sheets, cutting out holes for her eyes and mouth. She tied lots of empty whiskey bottles to rope, which she hung around her neck and waist. And she went to the party as departed spirits. And she was delighted to win the prize for best costume. On January 17, 1927, Daisy succumbed to breast cancer and passed away at her home in Savannah, Georgia at the age of 66. Her funeral was attended by many of her beloved Girl Scouts. She was buried in her uniform. Her pocket contains a telegram from the National Board that reads, You are not only the first Girl Scout, but the best Girl Scout of them all. Just as she had promised in her famous 1912 telephone call to Nina Pape, she truly gave something to the girls of the world. In the 15 years she devoted to her movement, it grew from those original 18 girls to over 168,000 members. Juliette Lowe's vision led her to influence the direction of girls' lives. Her program served as a roadmap designed for girls to embark on a journey of self-fulfillment and self-realization. She foresaw the needs of society and synthesized them into an organized program which became Girl Scouting. For the benefit of her girls, she assembled an impressive array of trained volunteer adults, gifted educators, and experts in fields from arts to industry. Since embarking on the journey with Juliet Lowe in 1912, Girl Scouts of the USA has positively influenced the lives of millions. 
committed to change and growth through new programs and opportunities for girls, the organization Daisy started with a phone call continues today to build girls of courage, confidence, and character who make the world a better place.